Hello friends. On behalf of the St. Thomas's College All Boys Association of New South Wales and the ACT, we bid you a joyous welcome to this festival of nine lessons and carols. This is our 10th consecutive festival. It's our 10th anniversary. And to help us celebrate this milestone, our very special guest today is the Anglican Archbishop of Sydney, the Most Reverend Glenn Davies and his wife Diane. Archbishop, we are so grateful that you've been able to keep your word given to us earlier this year and still make it today at this very busy start of the Advent season. I know it's been a big year, so thank you so much. Archbishop Glenn was actually a school teacher in his early years and also a lecturer and subsequently registrar at Moore College. So as an alumni association, I think it's especially fitting to have you with us today. Thank you. We are looking forward to hearing you speak to us. Our current school principal, uh, the warden, Reverend Mark Billy Moria, has also sent us a special message of felicitation today. And our current president of the association, Kulasiri Jaisinga, will be reading that out to us later. Kulasiri himself, the son of a much loved school teacher uh, back, back home. Also with us today is Archbishop Glenn's predecessor as Archbishop of Sydney, the Most Reverend Peter Jensen. So we are doubly blessed today. And I know Vasanta and Patricia are especially grateful for having you with us today. And Christine, thank you for joining us. In recent years, we have made our home here at All Saints Anglican Church in Parramatta. For that, we are very grateful to the rector, the parish council, uh, and the uh, congregation, the parish here at All Saints. Uh, Reverend Owen Goddard is with us today, thank you, and Mrs. Goddard, welcome indeed. And thanks to all the parishioners of All Saints who have also joined us to celebrate this special occasion. In 1848, the first Bishop of Sydney, William Broughton, consecrated this church. And just three years later, the first Anglican Bishop of Colombo, Bishop James Chapman, established our school as the College of the Apostle Thomas through the Church Missionary Society in Mutuo. This year, the school has been celebrating our centenary by the sea in our current scenic location in Mount Lavinia. Now, our voluntary choir has been working for weeks, practicing so hard with Vasanta, and for months, dare I say. Uh, the choir is drawn from the wider community and shows how this event has now become somewhat of an iconic kickoff to the Advent season, uh, the Christmas season, in the wider Sri Lankan community. Thank you to our choir. Our renowned organist again is Godly Gavalas from uh, Corpus Christi Parish in St. Ives and of course St. Patrick's Churchill in the CDB. Our organ master, our choir master again is Vasanta Virukul. Distinguished old boy, thank you Vasanta. Taking part in the festival today will be several past presidents of our association. Like our college, they come from a multi-religious, multi-ethnic background. True to the ethos of our school and our association, we have been thriving in harmony in this new land. As an exemplar to the wider community as well. It is in that spirit that we welcome all those of other faiths who are joining us today in, this, in a spirit of goodwill and peace and joy to all mankind in this season. During the festival, we will be taking up a collection to help us defray some of the costs of, uh, of conducting it. And following the festival, we will be serving refreshments in the parish hall. So please do rush across and chat over there. We don't want you to miss out. So, now, in a moment of silence, the choir will lead us in the traditional opening. So, after that, friends, let us join in, sing lustily, and make a joyful noise.
We thank you, our Heavenly Father, for this day and for all who have gathered here to celebrate this festival of nine lessons and carols organized by St. Thomas College, OBA of New South Wales and ACT. This being, as you heard, the 10th such anniversary. We also at this time pay tribute to you, Father, for Eric Milner White of King's College London, who initiated this special form of worship to celebrate the birth of Christ in 1918, which this year would be the 100th such anniversary. We also at this time pray for our alma mater, St. Thomas's College, Mount Lavinia, that not only provided some of us a great education based on Christian principles, but adopted this style of celebration many years ago. This special form of worship to celebrate the birth of Christ and herald in the joy of Christmas, in where our nine lessons are interposed with Christmas hymns and carols, we know, Father, has been pleasing to you to see that this has been adopted and continued all over the world. We thank you for the choir, the organist, for sacrificing many hours to practice, to raise this great worship together for you, our dearly beloved Lord. Father, we especially raise up the choir master, Vasanta Rirko, who has spearheaded this worship for many of the ten years and pray a special blessing upon him and his family. We also thank you for the Archbishop of Sydney Glendaris who has graced this occasion and who will deliver this year's Christmas message to us. Lord, we know that he will speak your words to us to herald in this Christmas season. Father God, Father God at this time we pray for our motherland Sri Lanka that is facing political appeal. We pray for the spirit of peace and the love of Christmas reigns through Sri Lanka and that law and order is restored. We also pray for Australia, especially the farmers with the drought and for the bushfires that are currently raging in Queensland. We stand in the gap for these two nations and raise up our prayers for your mercy to prevail. Heavenly Father, we raise up all those that are less fortunate than us and pray that you will fill them with your spirit of love, grace and mercy during the season. As we commence our special worship, we pray that the scriptures interposed with the carols and the Christmas message will be pleasing to you and also affect everyone gathered here this evening to fulfill the purposes you have for each and every one of us. Let your great sacrifice of Jesus, your only begotten Son, and the love in which you share him with us propel us to share the good news to men and share that love with one another to glorify Jesus, who endured so much to redeem us all. We pray and commit this evening to you and invite the Holy Spirit into our midst and pray that you have your own way with us. We anoint everyone who participates in this worship. Lord, please hear our prayer. Amen.
<coughs> Genesis uh, chapter 3, <coughs> verses 8 to 15. God announces in the garden of Eden that the seeds of a woman shall bruise the serpent's head. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some of the fruit from the tree, and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate it. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed you are above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly, and you will eat dust all day of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offsprings and hers. It will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. Praise be to God.
Mark chapter 5, verses 2 to 4. The prophet Micah foretells the glory of Jesus Bethlehem. But he would Bethlehem, Epitaph, who, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. Therefore, Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labor bears a son, and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israel. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they will live securely. For him, his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth. Praise be to God. The third lesson is taken from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 to 7. Christ's birth and kingdom are foretold by Isaiah. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be seen for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. The government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Praise be to God.
இதோ உனக்கு இனத்தாராயிருக்கிற எலிசபேத்தும் தன் முதல் வயதிலே ஒரு புத்திரனை கற்பத்தை திருக்கிறார் மலர் எனப்பட்ட அவளுக்கு இது ஆறாம் மாதம் திருவனாலே கூடாத காரியம் ஒன்றும் இல்லை என்றார் அதற்கு மறியால் இதோ நான் ஆண்டவருக்கு அடிமை உம்முடைய வார்த்தையின் படி எனக்கு ஆகக்கடவுது என்றார் அப்பொழுது திரவதூதன் அவரிடத்திலிருந்து போய்விட்டார்
1 to 7, unto us a boy is born of the birth of Christ. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Quirinus was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, and to Judea, in, to the city of David, which he called, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Praise be to God.
When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. All and all who heard it was amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Praise be to God.
when the school was re relocated to Mount Lavinia and reopened on the 26th of January 1918. The Pair Country could be an integral part of the family leading worship in the makeshift chapel attached to the dining hall. With the consecration of the chapel of transfiguration in the February 1927, the Pair entered into a new era of maintaining a high standard of Anglican choral worship. The festival of nine lessons and colors was introduced to the chapel in 1947 by Reverend Canon Roy Jean when he became chaplain. Modeled on the famous carol service of King's College, Cambridge, the Tolman carol service is today the start of the Christmas season for many people, old Tolmians and non old Tolmians, Christians and non Christians alike. It is his great pride for the for the Tomi Fraternity of New South Wales to have continued the carol service tradition in Sydney these past 10 years, and I congratulate all those responsible for having made it possible. May the service this year be a blessing to all who attend as you celebrate the great mystery of incarnation and the God in Christ made his dwelling among us. Therefore, be it in this Christmas time, I would care and delight to hear again the message of angels and in heart and mind to go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass and the dead like in an angel. With peace and blessings to all, Reverend Mark Wilmot, Roman. Eight lesson is taken from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. The wise men follow the star. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was shut, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where Christ was to be born. So they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had secretly called his wise men, determined from them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go, search carefully for the young child, and when you have found him, Bring that word to me, that I may come and worship him also. When they heard the king, they departed, and behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them. Then it came and stood over where the child was born. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they, heard, when they had come to the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother. They fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed for their own country another way. Praise be to God.
Heavenly Father, open your word to our heart and open our hearts to your word. For Christ's sake. Amen. Thank you. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light, he came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to the believe in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. Children not born of natural descent, nor of human decision, or of a husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testified concerning him. He cried out, saying, This is the one I spoke about when I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me, because he was before me. Out of his fullness we have all received grace upon grace already given. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but the one and only Son, who is himself God and is in the closest relationship with the Father, has made him known. I want to thank uh, the uh, president of St. Thomas's College of Joy Association, New South Wales ACT, and indeed all the former presidents uh, who are here tonight uh, for the very kind invitation to speak here at this 10th anniversary carol service. I'm sorry I can only bring one former archbishop with me since you have so many former presidents. Uh, I've only got two former ones alive, actually. Uh, but um, the other one wasn't able to come. We're very glad to have uh, Dr. Jensen and his wife here as well. And, and what a treat it has been uh, tonight. In your 165th year since the first uh, carol service was done at St. Thomas College, when the cathedral. Uh, the, uh, the way in which you use the, the uh, King's College Cambridge format and enhanced it with your own uh, Tamil carol, which I didn't quite follow, uh, and Sinhala carol, which I recognised Jesus and Bethlehem. <laughs> so I think I was on the right track. Uh, but to have the, the words of God uh, brought to us and, and to have them under the direction of uh, the Son uh, is, is a wonderful joy to have him here. Uh, you couldn't see that when Isaiah uh, 9 was being Nine was being read, you know, um, King, wonderful counselor, mighty God. He was there already singing, hand with his hands, and uh, in the choirs could, could, could see it. And of course, to have those, those wonderful words echoed in song by Handel, by Bach, and by other uh, authors and composers is such a joy for us uh, to have that rich Christian heritage. Jesu uh, Joy of Man's Design is very special to my wife and I because. That was the, 
the uh, song was sung when she came down the aisle. <laughs> she was uh, my joy of desiring. Um, but uh, Jesus was first, of course, and still is. But tonight's been very special. And the climax of the service is in many ways this passage from John's Gospel. Those opening words in the beginning. They echo, of course, the beginning of the Old Testament. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. A friend of mine said, yes, in the beginning, God. And I said, no, in the beginning, God created. God was actually before the beginning. That's just the beginning of time, the beginning of creation. God is everlasting, from everlasting to everlasting. God is eternal. God is uncreated. He is the creator God. And by his will and out of his love, he created the world and created us as image bearers in the world. John begins by saying, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. In our Christian understanding, we too quickly go to Jesus in the word, word, but we need to wait. It's not actually until verse 14 that Jesus appears. And come with me, would you, through the opening verses of John, chapter 1. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made, and without him nothing was made that was made. Here we're looking at the creative work of God by the breath of his mouth and the word that is spoken. The first words recorded in scripture, let there be light. God in his triune being, as three persons in eternal relationship one with the other, God, by His Spirit and His breath, speaks that Word. And John recognizes the Word of God personified in His Son is there at the beginning. The Son of God is part and parcel of the creation of the world. God working in triunity in that creative activity. In Him was life. And the light was the light of all mankind. And there the echo of let there be light. And here you, you get the word and the light coming together, which John will make uh, use of throughout his gospel when he says, I am the light of the world. When he goes on to speak of there was a man sent from God, John, he's speaking here of the Old Testament prophets. So that John is the quintessential, the final, the ultimate Old Testament prophet. No one is greater than him. And yet he is the least in the kingdom of God because he is the cusp of the new covenant. And he speaks God's word like prophets of old did. In actual fact, the word of God is in the world prior to the incarnation. And that's the very point that John is making. When he says the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world, he says he was in the world. Though the world and the world was made through him. We're going back to creation. But the world did not recognize him. And that, of course, is the story of the Old Testament. The inability of, of, of men and women to recognize who the true God was. And so the nations carve out images of wood and stone because they do not know the true God. And then John, the apostle, remarkably says, he came unto his own, and his own received him not. And that's a reference to the word of God coming to ancient Israel, to God's people. And would not you have thought that God who spoke with Adam and Noah and Moses before that to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And wouldn't you have thought that the people of God, especially after the redemption from Egypt, 
would have wanted to follow God in all their ways and all their being. But the history of Israel and the Old Testament is the rejection of the God of humanity. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them he gave power to become children of God. It's very interesting in chapter, uh, uh, later in chapter 10 of John's Gospel, he talks of how the word of God came to Israel in the Psalms. He speaks of those who actually believed that word of God like Moses. He recognises that there were some who did believe and they became true children of God under the old covenant. The word of God was active. The word of God is sharper than any two in sword. And as the word of God came to the prophets of the Old Testament, so God's word came to ancient Israel. And as the Apostle Peter says in his first letter, it was the spirit of Christ in the prophets of the Old Testament predicting the coming of the Messiah. There that spirit, the spirit of the unascended Christ in the Old Covenant, Speaking God's word, capturing the people who would understand. And those who did understand were born not of the flesh, nor of the human will, but of the will of God. God enabling people to be born again, to be changed from within, so that God would open blind eyes and unstop deaf ears, so they could hear and see and believe this word of God. And then John comes to his comments. And this word became flesh. This is the incarnation. This in flesh word of God made his dwelling among us. Now, the original language behind this in Greek speaks of it tabernacling among us. As if God, in, just as the tabernacle moved around Israel before its final resting place in Jerusalem, so Jesus, as the true temple of God, moved around ancient Israel and he ended his life in Jerusalem. The word of God became flesh and dwelt among us. All that we've heard tonight has been seeing the trajectory of the Word of God from Genesis through to the Old Testament with the prophets into the New Covenant with the Gospels. We've seen God's promises in Genesis 3. That same God who created the world and yet Adam and Eve fell from their pristine position and failed to trust their creator. And God promises salvation. God promises a Messiah. God promises a wonderful counselor, a mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So the Old Testament actually recognizes the trajectory of prophetic word of God of the Son of God in word under the Old Covenant. And now John's Gospel opens us for us that marvellous trajectory where Jesus now in flesh word of God will do what he'd been doing under the Old Covenant. He would come into his own. But his own would receive him not. He was not recognised in the world. In fact, his own people put him to death under Roman rule. But for those who believed him, those who were born not of the will of the flesh, nor of human will, but of the will of God, he made them children of God, members of his family, heirs of the kingdom of heaven, brothers and sisters, of Jesus. This wonderful carol service 
has seen that movement of God's promises come to their fulfillment in the incarnation of Jesus. And as the story of John's Gospel unfolds, we see this Jesus rejected, but believed in by a few. And yet it is death and ultimate resurrection. We see the beginning of many people believing in Jesus. And we are here tonight. We who are of many different languages. We who represent all the languages of the world and the peoples of the world from every tribe and tongue have seen Jesus as the one in whom we can put our trust. And Advent, in this Advent season, remembers not just the coming of Jesus in incarnation, but the second coming of Jesus in the world. And just as your hearts were warmed by the singing tonight, those tingles in your spine, to hear those wonderful words of Scripture put to song, the anticipation of, yes, another Christmas, but yes, a day closer, a year closer to the coming of Jesus, to the glory of the Lord Jesus, to wrap up this world and to bring in everlasting righteousness and the true peace that humans around the world long for but cannot find because it is only truly found in the Lord Jesus. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory, glory of the one and only Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. May the knowledge that God is a God who keeps His promises, may the hope of Jesus' return fill your hearts with fresh joy. And as we sing our final carols, rejoicing together in our common Lord Jesus, despite language differences and cultural differences, we are one in Christ, because Christ is the only Savior of human life. Glory be to God.
should set thy people but with mocking scorn and with craft on they born into Calvary.
Presidents. Presidents. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.